Hey everyone, good morning. It is Monday, the 8th of February, 2016. It is 8.49 a.m. And welcome to an audio edition of the Cartoon Flashback. And today, on the Cartoon Flashback, we're going to take a look at something that, if you're a Hanna-Barbera fan, you may have heard of growing up in the 80s, and you may have not heard of growing up in the 80s, or maybe you've seen, but you have no idea why it seemed very similar to something that Disney was doing at the time. And that, my friends, as you can see the title below and as well as see the pictures, that is HBTV, a.k.a. Hanna-Barbera TV, a.k.a. Hanna-Barbera's answer to MTV, a.k.a. Hanna-Barbera's answer to DTV, which was Disney's answer to MTV. That's right. Hanna-Barbera actually had their own uh, MTV rip, <laughs> their own MTV uh, uh, ripoff, if you will, or parody. Basically, Hanna-Barbera, along with Disney at this time, was providing what we consider now, because we do them ourselves, AMVs, or as I like to call them sometimes, fan vids, for the fans, for the viewers. And how this came about was really quite interesting. You see, back in 1986, I believe, I think it was 85, 86, let me check. got to make sure. But it was during the run of the, it was during the run of the, fan of the Fantastic World of Hanna-Barbera. Now, the Fantastic World of Hanna-Barbera was a syndicated television block, block uh, that ran mostly on Sunday mornings, if not Saturday mornings, if not weekday mornings, depending on the stations that was uh, advertising it. That's right. It was basically... You know, basically, <clears throat> originally, it was a 90-minute, an hour and a half to two-hour block to eventually, and I think I got this right, that, okay, it was two and a half hours, <laughs> hours. In 1985 to 1986, but in 1985, in 1985, it ran for three and a half hours, and then due to the success of it, the popularity, it was increased to four and a half hours in 1986. Yeah, so when it began in 1985, initially it was supposed to be a two-hour block, or an hour and a half hour block, if you will, hour and a half, two-hour block. But because of the popularity, it increased to two hours and then eventually increased to three hours, three and a half hours, and then four and a half hours. So think of it this way. You wake up in the morning on a Sunday morning, and let's say you got to get ready for church. What comes on at 6 a.m. or 7 in the morning before you have to leave for church? The fantastic world of Hanna-Barbera, and you want to sit back and watch these cartoons all you want, but then your parents are saying we got to go to church, okay? Fine, I ain't go to church. That might have been the only thing that hurt the fantastic world of Hanna Barbera it was the fact that when it would be aired on Sundays, it would hurt people, but it didn't necessarily hurt them. It didn't. You see. Even though it was aired on Sundays in a lot of stations, a lot of syndicated stations airing it on Sundays, as Wikipedia tells us, it also was aired on the weekday mornings or afternoons, as well as the Saturday mornings or afternoons. That's no, that's no lie. Because I think pretty much a lot of these stations realize that Sundays were not going to work, especially when you get into football season. So I had to scratch my ear there. But like I said, especially when you get into football season, it was not going to work. 
it was not going to work. Now, during this run, uh, it was, now during this uh, basically near decade run, that's right, it ran from, that's right, it basically, uh, basically, during its run, uh, for the for the near decade, if you will, it also had something that a lot of people actually enjoyed. But again, it's something that may have passed you by because you had no idea what why it was there. And yet, as you see the pictures here on this video, it pretty much gives you an idea of what that was. You see, doing you see, basically each show, each show would include Hanna Barbera television HBTV segments featuring music videos of classic Hanna Barbera cartoon clips, similar as it says here on Wikipedia to Disney's DTV and Nickelodeon sister network MTV. Now, some of the songs they did include, and they do mention some the, some of them here, but not all of them. Some of them that they would include would be uh, Bad Moon Rising by Credence Clearwater Revival, Somebody's Watching Me by Rockwell. They'd also have Every Breath You Take by The Police, um, as well as, let me see here. As well as they would have Ghostbusters, All Night Long. You know, they would have all these things. You Make My Dreams. Somebody actually has a playlist on YouTube. Maybe I'll provide it down below. Uh, you guys could check it out. Uh, Robert Strong Fox has a playlist of this. And again, I'll provide it down below. Some, depending on where you live, are watchable. Some of them are not. Now... Again, like I said, some of them, like like I mentioned, had the ones that mentioned on Wikipedia were Bad Moon Rising and Somebody's Watching Me. Again, like I said, you had All Night Long by Lionel Richie. That was used. You had Ray Parker Jr. Ghostbusters. That was used. Staying Alive by the Bee Gees. Every Breath You Take by the Police. Roman Holiday, Don't Try to Stop It. Don't Try to Stop It. Rockwell, Somebody's Watching Me. Hollow Notes, You Make My Dreams. Huey Lewis in the News, You Crack Me Up, Stevie Wonder, Whereabouts, Aretha Franklin, Freeway of Love. Now, there were other ones as well. As a matter of fact, when I looked up uh, information on it, I think there may have been two or three more HB um, uh, music videos out there. I think one was, one here is Pure Prairie League, Two Lane Highway. In fact, uh, BCDB, BCDB.com has a listing here. Let me pull it up. But HBT, HBTV was basically, like I said, Hannibal Barra's answer to what Disney was doing with DTV. Because as we all know, DTV was their answer to MTV. Basically a more family-friendly answer by showing cartoon clips, if not a few live-action clips, from some of the Disney properties to... Uh, that would go along with music from, uh, go along with songs and music from the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and maybe even early 90s. Yes, DTV had a longer life shelf than HBTV. That's not a lie. That's not a lie at all. Now, according to the other ones here, we had... Um, let's see. Well, he basically mentioned the artist. One of the artists was Bobby Boris Prickett. Uh, he has Juice Newton in there. He had Rare Earth that had a song used. He had the Ad-Libs, the Beach Boys, and that was it. Those are the only other ones, only other artists who had their songs uh, used as part of HBTV. Now, again, you might say it's very similar or sounds very familiar. Now, again, 
as you're listening to this, you might say, well, that does sound very familiar, but why'd they come up with it? Again, I think, again, like I said, I think the reason they did is because they saw the success. Hanna-Barbera obviously saw the success that, you know, Disney was having with DTV, which again was their answer and spinoff, if not parody, of MTV, uh, when MTV was about music videos. And they decided to take that into their own hands and say, hey, if Disney can be successful with it, so can we. So that went on for as long as I think uh, Fantastic World was on, for the near decade run that the Fantastic World of Hanna-Barbera was on. Now, sometimes depending on uh, which, you know, depending on which shows it would come after or in between, that all depended. Now, I can only assume, and maybe somebody else can give me more information, I can only assume that, the, that most of these music videos would come on at the end of each cartoon. So, after the end of each cartoon, you'd probably get maybe one or two music videos, maybe three music videos, or four music videos within the span of the block. Now, the fantastic world of Hanna Barbera didn't last at its length of four and a half hours, which was the longest it, it ever was. But, you know, during that four and a half hours, you would have to assume they got a majority of maybe four or five HBTV music videos in there. But as time went on, you know, because, you know, the fantastic world, it, it basically last, it started out as an hour and a half, went to two hours, went to three and a half, went to four and a half, but then decreased back to three, and then finally around 1990 to one hour. So you have to assume that the HBTV music videos that went on about that time, time got decreased by how many was shown. And by the time you got to one hour, you could probably assume maybe you got maybe one or two in there, if not one, you know, if not just one. Now, to me, what, now for me, when I found out about this, I found out about this honestly when I was doing my, uh, you know, history uh, video, one of my his recent videos, well, I was talking about the uh, history, I think, of the Hannibal Barra Superstar 10 series, that's what it was. I was talking about the history of the Superstar 10 series when I saw this on there. And I and I even I honestly didn't remember. It's the honest truth. You know, I didn't remember. And here and here I am, somebody that would watch the Fantastic World along with other shows. I used to watch the Fantastic World of Anna Barbera, even though maybe I didn't know it. And sorry, my finger hit the mic there. And I was scratching my beard. Uh, even though I didn't know it, the you know, to me, I was somebody that watched it. Now, I admit, when I think back at this, I do remember seeing probably some of this, but it's very vague. And here, and this has come from somebody that my sisters would, have, and this has come from someone whose sisters would say, oh, you can remember this, but you can't remember what you did about a couple, about a couple of days ago or a year ago. There's certain things that stick with you. What can I say? But, you know, to me, when, when I, but to me, you know, I vaguely probably remember seeing them, but this is something that obviously, you know, Hanna Barbera felt was a success because, like I say, as you can see through the pictures on the video, they did release various v, uh, v, VHSs, if not Laserdisc, uh, featuring these music videos, similar to what Disney did. Similar to what Disney did with DTV, Disney did the same thing throughout the years. They would take all the, they would take a compilation of all their DTV music videos, put them together into a VHS, and sell them or put them for rent, depending on where you would uh, rent your videos or buy your videos. Um, and that was pretty cool. And Hanna Barbera, again, obviously saw the success that Disney was having with that and decided, heck, if they could do it, we could do it. 
And so you have various um, HB uh, Hanna Barbera uh, VHSs distributed by World Vision and then Kids Classics that had a lot of these uh, music videos in there. That were basically the music videos themselves. And that was pretty cool. That was actually pretty cool. Um, so to me, looking back at this and, you know, just trying to, I mean, I, I mean, you go to YouTube again, I'll provide the link down below for the playlist, you know, just watching it. I have to give Hanna Barbera a lot of credit. You know, they saw something Disney was doing and they said, Hey, you know, if Disney could do it, we could do it. And you got to think of it this way. Yeah. Disney had a lot of characters. They had a lot of properties too, but Hanna Barbera basically was, you know, just had a, a huge frith roll of characters that they, they could just work with. See stuff that they can work with. Frith roll of stuff from years past that they could work with. Current and present. And that was the unique thing about this too. Yeah, they took the now that was the unique thing about this. Now, of course it does look like they take the same kind of um excuse me, I hit my, my finger at the mic there. They do take the same kind of direction and go the same path that Disney did with DTV. But I think the biggest, one of the biggest differences you will see there, I think one of the biggest differences you will see there is they actually use a lot of the more recent material as well. I mean, All Night Long actually had something from the Flintstones that I could only guess came from the Comedy Hour. I'm not really sure. And it was actually pretty good. I mean, the animation was top notch for like some of the Flintstone scenes. So that was that was really really good. But to me, this is something that I guess when you look back at animation, you know, it's something that is not on everybody's radar. You know, that not anybody growing up in the eighties, maybe seventies and eighties or eighties and nineties, will remember that much because they were basically placed in between uh at you know basically an animation block that ran that started out as started out as hour, an hour and a half increased to two hours three and a half hours to four and a half hours and then back to three and then eventually to one you know nobody really knew about it not not many people knew about it because of the fact that depending on what station you would watch the Fantastic World of Hanna Barbera, they just came out of nowhere, and all of a sudden that was it. Which I think is a good, which is uh, which I think is the reason why Hanna Barbera did release them on the VHS eventually, because they probably knew a lot of people didn't know about them. Now Cartoon Network, who obtained a lot of the Hanna Barbera properties, would eventually try to do their own take on it with the. Uh, cartoon crack ups music videos or something or remixes and those lasted for a little while but not not as long and i think just like with hbtv didn't have the impact lasting impact that they did now again if you want to watch them i will provide the link down below but to me this i mean if you were to tell people about if you were to pe ask people hey do you know what dtv was back in the 80s Automatically, a lot of people are going to say, oh, that was Disney TV. That was Disney music television. They'll automatically tell you that. If you were to ask them what DTV was and its relation to maybe Disney, and they would, or just ask them what DTV is back in the 80s, and they would tell you. A lot of people would. But if you were to ask them what HBTV was, they probably wouldn't know. And if you would Tell, if you were to ask them that, consider that similar question of what HBTV was in the 80s, unlike their answer maybe for DTV, not many people would know. Not pe many people would go like, oh yeah, that's that was Hanna Barbera Music Television. Not many people would tell you that because they wouldn't remember it as much. So to me, this is one of those lost treasures of the 80s and of animation that I think needs to be embraced again. Because yes, it was similar in sense to what Disney did with DTV. Yes, it was similar as being a parody, a ripoff, 
a spin-off, if you will, of what MTV at the time was doing when MTV was about music videos. But, you know, that, but, you know, you know, this is something that I think needs to be revisited. It does. I mean, if Disney can revisit DTV, in a sense, with the so-called remix, remix, if you will, then Hanna-Barbera or Warner Brothers can do this with their properties. They can. They can do this with their properties. And I think a lot of people know that. I think a lot of people know that, that they could do this with their properties. And that's a fact. That's a true, honest fact. But that's all I'm going to say here on this audio edition of the cartoon flashback as we looked at and discussed HBTV Hanna-Barbera Music Television. Again, I'll provide the link down below for the list of music video for the playlist by that you can find here on YouTube. Let me know what you guys think and do any of you actually remember what HBTV was when it came out? Let me know down